welcome, welcome everybody to um, our first kind of uh, parallel session of the day. Um, this topic is going, this session is going to be about materials used in the automotive industry and how they can be used to revolutionize and, and change and make more efficient what is happening in the automotive industry. Um, in particular, why we wanted to have this panel in, in the Basque Country is because it has a wide and well-known cluster around the automotive components industry. I think second in Europe to, to Frankfurt, and in fact, it's probably the most ancient cluster of automotive component suppliers around Europe. So uh, we're excited to have some distinguished speakers from uh, around the Basque Country. And uh, it will be a series of presentations with some Q&A at the end. So uh, without further ado, I'll hand it over to uh, Raquel from the Automotive Intelligence Agency to start us off. Um. So, um, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers, uh, Clean Tech Forum, for the given opportunity uh, to deliver the audience the message of uh, how uh, the strong potential the automotive sector has in regard to the creation of new business related to clean technologies. Uh, I'd like to uh, provide a brief overview. I mean, I'd like to, to explain why the sector has this potential. Um, and uh, first, I would like to, to deliver some figures about the, the, uh, at the global level, about the automotive sector, also at the European level, then some information about uh, the local automotive industry here in the bus, in the bus country, and then talk uh, briefly about the, uh, let's say, the automotive mega trends, what, what society is demanding, and uh, if society is demanding solutions for the automotive sector, that means that there is an opportunity for, for new businesses, and, uh, and many of them are related to the clean technologies. Um, after that, my colleagues uh, will present some concrete examples of how the introduction of advanced materials are also delivering these opportunities of, of growth and, and, and of new businesses. Um, okay, so let's begin. Um, well, 2012 was a record year for the automotive sector. There were something like 84 million vehicles were produced. And, well, this is a sector that even being 125 years old, there is uh, still uh, space for, for growth. So the, the forecast is that in something like five years, the sector will grow uh, 20, around 20%. So, uh, yeah, producing over 100 million vehicles in 2017. So who says this is, of course, it's a, it's a mature sector, but there's space for, for growth, okay? Um, so at European level, um, the sector has uh, a great impact in the, in the economy as a big driver. It's employing uh, 6 million direct uh, people, 12 million people are uh, being employed indirectly, indirectly and uh, represents 6% of the European GDP. And not only that, it's investing 26 uh, billion euros in, in R&D and research and development, right? So a big, a big driver, as I mentioned. But for sure, I mean, uh, well, there are many, fa many challenges that need to be faced and need to be approached from, from our industry. Uh, why? Because, uh, well, um, we consumers, we want to drive uh, greener cars, we want to drive uh, safer cars. So it means that the automotive industry, we have, we have to provide solutions in regard to reduce the, the, the emissions of, uh, of CO2, or we have to improve the, the safety systems, among other things, right? Uh, not only technological challenges, but also, well, this is a global, this is a global sector. Uh, we are providing, I mean, the, the, develop, the, develop, the developing of, of uh, middle class, it's taking part in some areas of, of the world, right? So there is a strong opportunity of growth in those uh, emerging markets, but that also means that there are new uh, competitors arriving, then there are uh, new trends because there are uh, new uh, factors of uh, cultural, different cultural uh, factors, right? So everything has to be taken into account in order to, well, to remain competitive and to be able to provide those solutions. Um, okay. Uh, those challenges are not only affecting the vehicle makers, but also the suppliers, right? Uh, because, well, along, uh, together with that process of globalization, there has been also a process of consolidation. So the number of suppliers has been reduced. We are less, but we, are, we want to consider us as a strategic partners of our, 
uh, clients, but that means that uh, our role has increased. And nowadays, up to 75% of, of the value of the car comes from supplier side, right? So this, okay, is an opportunity. We want to, uh, to look at, uh, to consider it as opportunity, but it's also a challenge. So it, that means that we need to be more flexible. We need to reduce our cost. We need to employ the best professionals in order to, well, to be, well, to, to be at, at that level, right? Um, okay, that's talking about the supplier side, but what happens today, we are here in Bilbao, and so what happens with, uh, with the automotive industry here in the Basque Country? So we are proud to say that, well, we have, uh, we account with 300 automotive suppliers, so the, the automotive sector here in the Basque Country is very strong, mainly from the supplier side, so those 300 automotive companies um, um, generate uh, uh, turnover last year of 12 billion euros, so which represents 17% of the GDP of the country. So I think that gives a clear idea of how specialized and focused our, our um, sector is, right? Um, also, uh, we are employing 75,000 people. Half of those people are working here in our headquarters in the Basque Country, but half of them are working outside. I will give you some, some figures about the, the, our global presence afterwards. And the, um, the automotive sector here in the Basque Country represents 40% of the production of car components in Spain, right? So I think that gives a clear perspective of the strong the, the importance and the <clears throat> strength of, of our industry. Um, apart from the suppliers, we account with the, the plant of Daimler in Vitoria, but we are working not only for them, but with all major brands uh, worldwide. Um, and also, due to the long industrial tradition of, of the Basque Country, uh, we account also with the most ancient automotive cluster association in Europe, right? We will turn, which will turn 20 years old this year. Um, so, um, apart, I mentioned the 300 suppliers, I think it's important to underline that this, in, in this small territory, because I don't, I don't know if you had a chance of traveling a bit around during these days, but this is like a territory that you can drive from, from west to east and from north to south within one hour. So in this small territory, we have the whole value chain available. So from the uh, steel manufacturers, raw, uh, raw materials uh, providers, we have machine tool manufacturers, dye animal makers, engineering companies, um, vocational training institutes, universities very focused on the automotive sectors. So these capacities, the, the integration of all these capacities enable us to provide very quick and complete solutions to our customers. And not only that we are integral, but we are global, so don't see the Basque automotive industry as a local here in the northern part of Spain as a local industry, but we are global. Uh, we account with um, over 600 manufacturing plants worldwide. Our export um, rate is 82%, half of it remains in Europe, so France, Germany, main markets, but all of half, half of it goes to um, to uh, America and Asia, okay? So we have become global, global players. So all this uh, outstanding, let me say, performance of the Basque automotive industry, together with this long uh, tradition of uh, industrial cooperation, enabled some years ago the creation of AIC, the Oromorif uh, Intelligent Center, which is an open innovation center created to generate added value for the automotive sector, uh, at a global level through cooperation. So the mission is to support any innovative project, any new project that uh, along the whole process of innovation. So uh, with some, starting from the uh, generation of new ideas, the feasibility of those ideas, uh, training the <coughs> professionals that they are going to lead uh, those new projects, uh, carrying out the research and development activities in order to take that technological feasibility and supporting the creation of, of new businesses, right? So, I mean, all these characteristics from the uh, um, automotive industry at global level, at European level, at local level, uh, the uh, creation of AIC, the Automotive Intelligence Center, um, shows us uh, the automotive sector has a strong potential, I, as I mentioned in the, in the very beginning, but where? Where are the business opportunities within the sector? 
uh, then let me come back to the uh, automotive, well, mega trends, right? Or in, in the end, is what is society demanding from our, from our side? So uh, if you have a look around um, in society, in many places of the world is getting, or in the mature market is getting older and older, right? So for example, old people, they don't consider uh, owning a vehicle as, um, as a main feature they want to. So the, the property of the vehicle is not um, a positive aspect anymore. Young people, for example, uh, many young people don't consider the car as a symbol of status, but on the other, highest, on the other hand, uh, society wants to drive, as I said before, uh, safer cars or um, greener cars because we all want to reduce our dependence on, on uh, fossil fuels. So we want to be able to provide solutions for what society is demanding. If there is a need, if there is a demand on society, it means there is a business opportunity. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't bring anything that we create uh, really advanced technological solutions if society is not going to absorb that. But in this case, society is demanding those solutions. And okay, which are the ones that have a great impact in clean technologies? So the working lines, uh, the automotive industry is working on um, is mainly fuel savings, is emissions, is the reduction of emissions, and is eco design. Whether the approach comes from uh, the introduction of new materials or electronics or uh, product design, those I would say are the main vectors uh, our industry is working in associated to the clean uh, to the to clean technologies. Um, my last slide shows some of the examples that the vehicle makers are carrying out in order to, um, well, in order or, or to, to um, um, develop, yeah, to, to reduce light weight, right? As you can see, some of them are more concentrated in uh, or are dedicating more resources in, in the introduction of new materials. Some other are more focused on, on the design of, of product. And well, in, in the uh, documentation, I'm sure will be provided. You can have, uh, you can have a look to the, to the detail of what concrete strategies they are carrying out in, in to this regard. But my colleagues here in, uh, in, in the session, they are going to provide concrete examples in difference from the perspective of different materials um, that also um, yeah, provide the solutions to increase the, the efficiency of the vehicles, which is what in the end society is, is demanding. So Francesc is going to, uh, to provide some examples in regard to steel, Kerman is going to provide examples of, of uh, aluminium, if I am right, and how to, uh, in regard to composite. So I think it will, uh, we will provide a complete overview of different strategies to this regard. Thank you.